Today News New York. My name is Christy Chris and this is our weekly news roundup. Below are the news that made talking points for us in the week that just ended. On Monday, we reported that the government of the United Kingdom, UK, updated its terrorism alerts to her citizens in Nigeria, warning of potential attacks by terrorists. On the same day, we brought you the report that ahead of next year's general election in Nigeria, Edo State Governor Godwin Obasiki called on Nigerians against supporting the All Progressive Congress, APC, in 2023, warning that the country will break up if Bola Tinibu wins the next elections. On Tuesday, we reported that 52-year-old Rishi Sunak was officially announced as the new Prime Minister for the United Kingdom as the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson opted for a decision late Sunday to abandon his political combat bid and step down from the race. On the same day, we informed you that in the face of the big allegations of oil theft going on in Nigeria, the managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority, Mohamed Belo Koko, came out to clarify that rogue vessels engaged in crude oil theft on Nigerian waters often go undetected because they turn off their automatic identification system, AIS. Still on Tuesday, we reported that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced that Imo, Bayelsa, and Kogi state governorship elections will hold on November 11, 2023, in a move to streamline the electoral process in those states. On Wednesday, we reported that the Benue State Governor, Samuel Autumn, technically withdrew his support for the presidential aspirations of the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, after accusing him of denigrating him as governor and working against the interests of the people of the state. On the same day, we reported that in another controversial statement, the Duchess of Sunset, Meghan Markle, revealed that she is actually 43% Nigerian. The statement has continued to generate reactions on social media. Thursday, we reported that the president of Iran made some fresh claims that the riots which had, which had been sparked by Masha Aminik's death had also paved the way for terrorist attacks a day after a gunman had killed at least 15 people at a Muslim shrine. Also on Thursday, we informed you that a hermit from Iran nicknamed the world's dirtiest man for not taking a shower for more than half a century has finally died at age 94. On Friday, we reported that following the announcement of the policy to redesign some of the Naira nodes, the Nigerian Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, controversially distanced herself from the planned Naira redesign, which had earlier been announced by the Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin Imefiele. On the same day, we informed you that the president of China, Xing Chenbing, was confirmed as leader of the country's Communist Party for a third term in office in the face of the controversies thrown up against him. Finally, on Saturday, we reported that the leader of a group identified as the Yoruba Nation Self-Determination Struggle, Professor Banji Akintoye, had sent a serious warning to the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Senator Bonnet Nibu, against deceiving the Yorubas while also warning him to stop blackmailing him because of his ambition. 
Also, we informed you the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, hailed the sale of Twitter to tech billionaire Elon Musk. However, he declined to commit to rejoining the platform. My name is Krista Chris, and thank you for watching.